Hello, this is Michael Hexter, and welcome to Politics 2100 here on YouTube. So this episode I'm calling Republican Government Shutdown, a product of 245 years of reactionaries and economists mangling Adam Smith. So as you may know, the founder of modern economics is considered to be Adam Smith, um, and most notably for his work is published in 1776 uh, in Great Britain, uh, The Wealth of Nations. And um, his output uh, also includes an earlier book called The Theory of the Moral Sentiments um, uh, in 1759, I think. Yeah, 1759. And so, but anyway, uh, and The Wealth of Nations is a very long book okay with many chapters to it and and sections and but there is one there are a few phrases that are held up by um the dominant economic framework of the last 150 years or so uh we call it neoclassical economics it's the dominant uh strain of economics and uh, which is talks about the invisible hand of the market and how people pursuing their self-interest uh, in a market situation is the ideal um, form of social organization. Now, this is not what Smith said. He he used a compelling metaphor for what he thought happened in markets and why they worked well. And uh, he was, like some earlier economists, an opponent of mercantilism, which was the dominant economic school during that time that he was writing, and, and he was an opponent of that. Um, and he um, thought and he believed that, that, that this, the state or the the crown which at, at that point in time the 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 state was uh a a monarchical state um in britain and everywhere else in the world uh, the 1776 in some sense was the uh with the american revolution was the start of the first republics in the world but that wasn't um smith's concern during uh, in, in his writing i mean um uh, he was talking about the wealth of nations and so forth and so on. Um, and he didn't uh, comment on at least, you know, that was the major focus of his work. And so he, uh, it is, so anyway, it's taken as a license. So, so the idea of free market economics, so this is very, very familiar to anybody who has been involved in, in economics or politics over the last 150 years that there's basically what's called laissez-faire economics is another version of this, or it's a, a an idea that somehow, you know, you let um, trade and, and you don't get the state to, for instance, uh, there used to be something, or letters patent is, that, that the, the crown would issue to certain manufacturers uh, or certain uh, uh, exporters so that, that they had a quasi-monopolies on uh, their um, or actual monopolies on their particular form of goods. So and that this this created um, uh, a distortion in the market and and they would simply um, uh, price the goods to the limit that they could um, and and that that would would impoverish um, the nation overall. So in other words, the idea was a dynamic nation would have this, market this free market going on where this invisible hand where in other words not the visible hand of the state invisible hand of the market would be allocating goods and services in an ideal way and and so anyway this was the birth of this idea which is very very familiar to everybody and it's it's become a um a religious belief, a, a you could call it market fundamentalism. Uh, it's it's become a religious belief on mostly on the right wing, but it's it's really throughout um, 
most uh, it, up to the left, up to the actual real left, um, it's become a, uh, a a a quasi religion. Though there are there are phases and trends, and 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 in some sense, it's not. At the moment, at least, we're seeing some breaks in the sort of the total idolatry of the idea of the free market and of the 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 allowing basically self-interest to dominate everything to to become the driver. So, in other words, the clashing of self-interests will somehow make uh, things the best they can be. And so, uh, Adam Smith, though, and this is why this is mangling Adam Smith, is that. In many parts of his long work, The Wealth of Nations, he talks about all kinds of state functions that are important for economies to um, function. And so his work is sort of this kind of smorgasbord where people pick out of it what they want. And I'm not saying his work is a harmonious whole. I think there are contradictions in Adam Smith. So he, for instance, you know, was very skeptical of the self-interest, the greed. So, I mean, he he was trying to make a, uh, there is a sort of a, a distinction he's trying to, tries to make between, you know, sort of rational self-interest and, and, and then, and then greed. And somehow greed is associated with this monopolies or these mercantile uh, forces that were allied with the state and just and and would squelch all competition because of their the guarantee from the state or from the royal from the king then or maybe a queen but anyway from the the monarch and and so you know he was trying to free commerce from this but at the same time at the other he sort of said well you know um, uh, business people are are bound to collude with each other and and at the expense of the public, so there was a little bit of a of a a magical uh, ideal that that caught the eye the, the eye of people and saying, oh, this invisible hand and this wonderful free market. But at the same time, all throughout both wealth of nations, and then if you think about his prior work, um, theory of the moral sentiments, he really uh, had all kinds of, of uh, reservations about the pursuit of self-interest um, as the driver, the primary driver of, of felicity and social life and so forth and so on, or even of wealth. And so, and, and anyway, so there was just this, it's, it's a grab bag of things. And he was a, you know, in some passages, a fairly, good stylists so and so on and and he just he has this major work that was a bestseller at the time in the time uh uh in the and it, and has sold you know mil, probably a few million copies during its um uh uh you know long long uh history of being published so anyway um it, he is used though as a a talisman because of the the way this reactionary mangling of his work uh, has become the dominant um, um, interpretation that it's being used by both politicians who have a certain kind of social vision, but also by economic interests who see their uh, role as to keep, especially in the era of um basically since the the late 19th century in the era of social reform and also revolution where governments have responded to the surge of uh industrial capitalism the the surge of great wealth of great for, in great fortunes in terms of you know individual fortunes millionaires and then billionaires okay um going through multi-billionaires then to billionaires and now to multi-billionaires and centi-billionaires now um that uh that in that process there are there are governments who 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 realized that they needed to step up to um uh regulate uh the economy in some form or another or 
to overturn it to to create a to try to create a socialist commonwealth of some kind um uh unfortunately using bad theory to do that or very incomplete theory to do that extremely uh, complicated and and un unachieved goal and so um so anyway uh uh the Adam Smith, though, as I say, is kind of a collection of a smorgasbord. So he really is not uh, a, a a full theory of how it all works. He kind of is a little bit of a narrative, but also he's writing really before the surge of industrial capitalism. He did not have the benefit of of actually having data, okay, and and historical development um, of capitalism and. In, in a way, it's uh, it's ironic that the discipline of economics really has been a poor um, use user of both empirical data and also history to update its theory. It's become a war of basically of different grabbing different parts of Smith, creating these different schools, scholastic scholasticism, uh, and and also creating abstract models that are not derived from empirical study or for, from uh, uh, data that can be gleaned from economies um, uh, and, and, and sort of the dynamics of, through history, but are, have become hobby horses in different ways for uh, these schools of economics installed as, as if by, a, as a religious form of religious cult. And, and, with there are some you know relation that each of these they recognize certain features that are seem to be close to one dynamic of the economy and then they make their entire theory based on that so anyway but the reactionaries uh are a group that is very useful to the very wealthy to and co now major corporations so that we don't we not only have individuals who have multiple billion dollar you know wealth so forth and so on um uh and in the early 20th century million million dollar wealth which was then the equivalent of you know hundreds of millions of dollars now if not a billion dollars but anyway so um that these um uh, uh people saw the usefulness of creating a screen and, and a confusion about how economies actually work because they don't they didn't want governments to um, be understand and be involved in their business and in regulating business overall and also helping labor helping workers um, uh, uh, gain some more independence from their employers if not overthrow them and take over their enterprises one way or the other so so they're different varying degrees that not that doesn't all lead to the socialist or the communist um outcome which some reactionaries immediately think every uh and this is this was friedrich hayek's road to serfdom he thought a, a social democratic approach was immediately a a, a entree into totalitarianism and and but it was that was an ideological operation that he was doing uh i think pretty sort of consciously pretty consciously and and calculate in a calculated manner uh, though at the same time he's also a true believer in some of this sort of fr invisible hand he he developed his own rephrasing or reinterpreting of that invisible hand idea this sort of um uh, uh autonomous um, uh, uh, dynamic uh, self-organization of the economy without the um, help of a central authority um, and, and imagining in some sense that that was a always a distortion, always a, the wrong thing to do. The, or uh, only by uh, uh, an exception, someone saying, oh, okay, yeah, exception, we don't want that. We're not interested in that. Okay, let the government do that. But it's not really the central key thing about an economy. But anyway, um, so we have then, so this, this history, so I'm not attributing to the current Republican Party, the people who are occupying 
uh, the you know the majority of the of the Congress, the U.S. Congress, which has among other things the power of the purse um, in the U.S. government. Um, I'm not attributing to them an intellectual background where they have studied Adam Smith and their partisans in in intellectual discussion of any of the things I'm talking about. Um, but they have absorbed through long training. Um, uh, and I'm not not a formal training, but a a uh, just imbibing political discourse of various kinds that is about um, making the role of government and government officials and bureaucrats and so forth and so on appear to be always interfering in this magical process of the invisible hand and the free market, always being these interlopers, uh, being an incrustation on top of. And so therefore their role in government is simply is, is to sabotage it literally is so by sabotaging government, they think they're doing a good thing or they another way to think of it, though, is that and this is in, especially in the United States, you know, and, and it happens in other countries as well. But in the United States in particular, we have a racialized um, view of who who is benefited most of the from the government uh, welfare programs of the last 120 years or so. Uh, and those are the the undeserving people and the people who are most black, you know, people who were ex, you know, the the or the uh, descendants of of slaves, former slaves, and and also you know people who are you know Native American, who are um, uh, Spanish speaking, so what's on who came from Mexico, uh, you know, anyway, sort of what we call quote unquote people of color. Um, those the people who are considered to be not the the white people who are the the at the top or the or supposed to be the 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 real americans so to speak so the the gop thinks that it is the spokespeople and the protector of this quote-unquote real americans the white christian um patriarchal people families you know uh evangelical christian so forth and so on has become in the last 50 years that's become more focused and more uh, tightened around this particular group um, of this is the sort of the the kind of uh, the the base of the Republican Party, but anyway they they think of government is is not really helping those it's it's really it helps more so any innovation or anything new that government does is really not helping or is taking away from their constituency so they think of it as a, a racialized. Uh, um, uh, uh, program or any they're they're trying to cut what they consider to be racial or they're calling woke sometimes now so anything like that is that's their target for for we're trying to cut these things because that's um now they're okay with busting up government in general because they have this general idea of being it's it's a it's a little uh, what I'm, I'm attributing to them maybe more strategicness when i talk about this sort of racialized thing um, but yes and no in, in ways, and this is the way Donald Trump really actually talks about these things. He says, well, I'm not going to cut your Social Security. And the Republican Party has kind of learned in part from Trump that they need to be reassuring. And now Trump is still the quote unquote master of this form of double talk where he, you know, implies that there are very, very unworthy people that he's going to be very brutal with and and he's not going to give them anything and he's going to you know build a wall to keep them out and so forth and so on and he's going to going to shoot them on site you know because they're the 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 urban criminal class and so forth and so on but meanwhile i'm going to preserve your meaning his white um mostly white but but he's also he's trying to invite other people who are black or or uh, Hispanic into that group who kind of identify with sort of hierarchy of worthy and unworthy people. We're the better kind of people. So he's he's working on. He, it's hard for him because he uh, he is so racist and also and and his his core core constituency is so racist that they have trouble, you know, 
accepting a kind of a universalistic message, um, which actually, I mean, he won in 2016 in part by issuing a kind of, or at the end of his campaign, a universalistic message, um, uh, uh, obviously not how he, but just it was a, a very clever, um, I mean, campaign message that he, uh, like a two minute final argument for his presidency. Um, and, and, and that he, Anyway, so so he has been, in a way, an innovator in the Republican Party that some people that people are trying to emulate in different ways. But it also goes his approach is not favored by the donor class. In other words, he uh, there are parts of Trump they like, there are parts they don't like. And anyway, his um, and he understands though, in order to for him to win, he needs to to reassure the boomers and so forth and so on that their Social Security and their Medicare is safe. And meanwhile, you've had Republicans for a long time sort of implying that that Medicare and Social Security are on the block. But now the current um, way they think about it is, well, it's for the undeserving young, the undeserving black and brown people, so forth and so on. Uh, that's what that's what we're going to cut. That's that's who we're going to punish. But anyway, this shutdown is is part of this. um uh the law or the entire almost entirely white uh republican um uh, uh uh congress majority is is uh congressional majority is 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 think thing that it's okay if they sabotage government because somehow we're going to pr- magically protect our base while punishing the bad people and by and also that we have this theory of government anyway it's being repeated i mean most of it comes from fox news and other right-wing sources but they just hear it they imbibe it just that that all government activity is necessarily inefficient and wasteful and 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 it's not the source of innovation not the source of of anything good it's all from private sector and the market and so forth and so on and and therefore, um, if we shut government down, not, not much bad is going to happen, and, and it's not really that foundational to the society. And so they are they are internal saboteurs of government in a way. And so, and part of this is they 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 justify it because of this misreading of Adam Smith that that it's the it's the really the magic of the invisible hand that they're really standing up for, and it's this. Meanwhile, now I, I think that we need a, a a fundamental reworking of economics. So I don't think following Adam Smith is necessarily the thing to do. In other words, he was writing 245 years ago or 250 years ago about an economy that is very different now. He had some intuitions and some observations that are applicable today, and some that are not. Um, but he we we need to be looking at what our current uh goals are in terms of th- there's a physical challenge we have that is not just about becoming wealthier it's about human survival and 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 uh, you know the the accumulation of wealth has turned out to be um something that is damaging to in most cases in, in 99% of cases in the way that we've been doing it damaging to our own prospects as a, as people and our own natural wealth so to speak the wealth of that includes our health includes the health of children it includes the health of of non-human species that we depend on the 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 air that we breathe so forth and so on the water um it, so anyway, so we have a have a have a different goal for economics, or uh, um, or that has been created for us by the focus on accumulating wealth and and this lar- this misreading of of um, uh, uh, Smith. Now we need to create a certain kind of natural wealth and social wealth that's I think why you know shared in the most egalitarian manner possible. Um, and and internationally, and we need to work on basically a circular economy. This is an enormous task. It's 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 as it's 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 more fundamental than Adam Smith's 
I mean, Adam Smith, you know, created this discipline of economics, but he he created a smorgasbord of things that were about the economy of 245, 250, 260 years ago. And we need to have, I mean, just within the frame, that framework that of not thinking about um, sort of natural wealth and, and natural uh, uh, sustainability, basically of, of, of wealth and of, of um, human uh, well-being okay better than wealth okay um, and and human happiness okay so um, all those things are more important than than what we call wealth but we need to um, uh, even within the framework of Adam Smith's concerns to understand where governments how governments operate and make that part of the central, uh, focus of economics, okay? Um, economics is not just a a pin, a p a e, you know, uh, a hymn to the glories of in of individual entrepreneurship and ownership of a bit of capital. It's that has that we've heard too much, too many hosannas, too much praise of that, too much inflation ego inflation of um the people who are those owners of that productive and unproductive capital that well the money and the the sometimes owning a, a real piece of of productive capital sometimes just owning assets over and so on or you know paper or real or assets or whatever you know land or um uh and that those people have been uh uh pampered so to speak by economic thinking and they've been cosseted and been in in the case i'm saying in this misreading have been protected from government uh uh scrutiny and interaction and and government taxing them correctly so that we have a a, a sustainable society that we have a sustainable economy um and so um this uh, so we, we have oh, some instruments there that are, are emerging, for instance, modern monetary theory, uh, describes how the instrument of the currency can be used wisely. It, and also it suggests some other things about states. It is vague about some other things. It doesn't have all the, uh, the answers to, but it is, it is one critical addition to, our understanding of how economic wealth can be created and might be created in a more sustainable way, um, more egalitarian way or more democratic way. It has that potential. Um, and there are other areas of scrutiny about the actual physical objects that we create, how, where circularity, we need to in, embed circularity in the study of economics and how uh, to eliminate waste, eliminate physical waste. And one of those wastes, for instance, are CO2 are, or greenhouse gases. And how do we eliminate those from our the processes of our economy or create a balanced um, uh, uh, absorption, emission and an absorption of those, um, uh, in, you know, but in a way that's guaranteed, that's not... Uh, just a, a an excuse to continue our business as usual of biz, business as usual of using fossil fuels. So anyway, going back to the original topic, the government shutdown is partly uh, an outgrowth of a, a party that is living in this and the rightward part of this swamp of economic ideas that have come out of the mangling of both Adam Smith and some other people, the mangling of Marx, the mangling of, of, and, and I'm not saying those people had it right. So those, those old guys had it right either. And that they should be looked at worshipfully and carefully. Um, and, and as, as sort of as spirit guides to our future 
okay? They, they, we can learn something from them. We can also learn from the misuse of them. But um, we need to uh, be able to create an operable, an operative theory that isn't about creating uh, advantage for the already advantaged, which is what basically the GOP is about. It's cr trying to saying that government, which has historically been somewhat helpful to not differentially helpful, but but it has raised up a few of the the downtrodden, the few of the excluded from this, you know, the more privileged group in our society or the, the you know, whatever the 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 ethnically more, uh, you know, centered or whatever it is within the, the culture minority or majority uh, that 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 those it has done some of that but it, it's it's uh uh it's not nearly the it, it's not the instrument of bias per se or it doesn't have to be that and anyway so the, but these these people who are on a neo-fascist route are looking for this kind of scapegoat this kind of uh uh i mean they've been going that way for a long time but they're now openly embracing a politics that is um neo-fascist and 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 able just to sort of to invent ideas and invent things that are un, not based on reality that are lies to try to obscure reality but this is this is based though on a long tradition of how economics has obscured the real role of the government in all kinds of activity that in other words and this is, for instance, with the government shutdown, we see this in the, the you hear frantic discussions about whether the FAA, uh, which is a federally funded agency, will be shut down because that affects the richest people. OK, and and so and the and the the and the donors to um, to the GOP and also to the Democratic Party, the, the mega donors, and that that uh, by shutting down the government, they are endangering their the the people who are their 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 patrons their the group that that really they're they're out to, to, trying to protect and trying to uh, or not they're not trying to but they they believe they they're they're indebted to these people okay because of their their mega donations and and if they picked up the phone and called them you shouldn't be doing this they probably will stop doing what they're doing but anyway um their role is this kind of attack dog against very very weak social democracy coming from the the democrats the very very weak um specter of some pro labor policies coming from i mean there it's better the biden administration is better in this regard than almost any uh uh administration before them but anyway but the specter of this is is the, these attack dogs of the right the reactionary attack dogs are probably going to go too far and they're going to be pulled back um, but anyway, based on lots of mangled economic theory that ignores government, that says government has, has hardly any productive role in the economy until they realize their rich friends are. And so they're, but it's the, the, the way to counter that and, and just sort of to end here. The, the Democrats or the whoever the Social Democratic Party is or the, the party of the quote unquote left or the center left or whatever it is should be constantly reminding people of the role of government and how government does good things for them. It's not doesn't do everything for them, does many good things. It could be doing more things for them. They can do things equitably in other countries. It's done things more equitably. Why are we doing that here? You know, breaking the wall. OK, between that that divides the U.S. I mean, D Bernie Sanders does that to some degree, talking about how other countries have health care, so forth, and so on. But it could be done in any, any number of different ways. Um, and, and that party needs to be constantly reminded, look, you need us, you need the government, you, you know, we're not ashamed of that. That's something that they absorbed from the neoliberal turn, the Clinton and then the Obama and, uh, turn of, of the Democratic Party at, to acting ashamed and acting like they're not supposed to stand up for their, 
Uh, I mean, they're now starting to be a little bit more forthright, but it's not consistent. It's not educational. It's not, there's so much uh, pro-business, quote unquote pro-business um, BS being pumped out both through advertising and also business press, which is, um, and even also the quote unquote political, political media that, that there needs to be a constant reminder that look, you know, your, our society doesn't really won't really exist without a functioning government, and we certainly won't be able to deal with the enormous challenges of climate change that is that is now being laid out for us over and over again. Especially if you if you pay attention to internationals, but also just here in the New York area, pay attention to what's happening right now here in New York. So uh, in terms of flooding and all that, so w- there's an enormous list of of tasks there that. Are, there's the basic tasks that have gone unacknowledged and people people uh, assume are going to just happen anyway. And so anyway, all of this is based on this mangling of this 245-year-old book and, and, and also the discipline that ro- arose out of it that is filled with scholastic school, schools that are, many of them are based on that super small fragment of that book that um uh that has become then this enormous um uh, obsession and and also a uh, ideological fig leaf for um major corporations and rich people to escape uh regulation and and fair taxation and also government uh potential takeover of certain aspects of the economy that are not functioning well uh banning certain activities all th- things that they want to make that seem like that's that's beyond the pale that's quote-unquote communism to be doing those things uh or you know something crazy rather than just normal sanity and normal functioning and so uh anyway they're going to get pulled back because the the very wealthy are going to experience if the fea is 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 shut down they're going to immediately experience the lack of government and and so so we'll see this ideological veil uh being pulled back just a little bit democrats unfortunately not well prepared to seize that and say this is what um <coughs> this is what you've been on on to all the time we need to be doing more of these things we need to be building this up and improving this and also working on our infrastructure to and and stop and getting out of fossil fuels and blah 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 green new deal climate emergency all these different things so anyway i'll stop here and please share your thoughts in the comments below and uh, please like the video if you got anything out of it and i look forward to seeing you in the next video